G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. This is Jesse and I'm joined by fellow True Footier, Daniel Busher. An OG, if you will. All right, we're back today because our predictions videos have been a total hit and I thought today we'll do a different format and we've got Daniel Busher, our master better. I almost said something completely different. <laughs> so Busher, instead of going through the usual format of getting you to give us our ladder predictions, we want to know what are the juiciest tips that <laughs> the juiciest tips. <laughs> I might edit that out. Yeah. The, uh, what are what the juiciest th odds on offer at the moment? Uh, betting on the 2019 AFL season. Bearing in mind, if you're under 18, you shouldn't be watching this video. <laughs> Actually, watch it. Hit like, subscribe, but don't bet. Well, I've sort of based a lot of my logic here on the concept of implied odds, which is basically what the odds, like if it's a $6 odd bet, for example, basically what percent chance... <laughs> So basically, I've gone for a few bets where I think basically what I've predicted is more likely to happen from what their odds suggest, rather than perhaps necessarily definitively this is the way things are going to happen. But you like betting, don't you? Is it a bit of a passion of yours? I do enjoy it. I haven't done much of it lately just because I haven't had spare money to bet with. and Because you've lost it all betting? Not lately. <laughs> what experience do you have betting? I've helped a couple of friends with a Facebook page we had running for a few years, actually, where we gave people tips. People were even paying money to subscribe and get our tips at one stage, so that was quite interesting. But anyway, you should listen to him. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bush, well, straight into it. Um, what are some of the juiciest looking... I can't think of a funny way to finish that sentence. <laughs> Punts. <laughs> Gonna have to censor that out. <laughs> like, the first one I noticed, which I found quite interesting, was Ben Brown for the Coleman at six bucks. Going back to the implied odds idea I mentioned earlier, that they basically suggesting that he's about a 16, 17 percent chance of winning the Coleman. Well, for reference, last year he was second, only lost by a few goals to Jack Rewalt, who, for reference, is now going to be competing with Tom Lynch for goals. They also had Josh Kennedy from the Eagles ahead of him in terms of the odds at five dollars, but. Kennedy's a tough one to always gauge with the injuries and health. He's always a tough one to know how he's going to go. Ben Brown's in a situation where he's the undisputed number one K forward with these new rules. He's probably in a situation where he's a better than a 17% chance of winning. Where are you getting these odds from? Because it's important we specify you're using Bet Easy odds. Yep, is Bet Easy. Yeah. Okay, all the ones I've got are for sports bet. Okay, yeah. yeah. My yeah. next tip was Zach Butters for the Rising Star. Because on Bet Easy he was paying $23, but you suggested on sports bet he was paying a little less, didn't you? Yeah, he's paying $18 on yeah. sports bet. Yeah, but there were some weird names like that were considered better favourites for the Rising Star, weren't they? Yeah. Well, the reference they had LDU ahead of him. They had Radigalier from Geelong with be a better chance of him. Even his own teammate Will and Drew had yeah. better odds than him. That's a strange one. I think yeah. I had as well. Darcy Fogarty and Will Setterfield are better oh, odds. Yeah. Even Bailey Smith's one I feel is a bit contentious because really, I feel maybe Bailey Bailey Smith. I reckon he's a good player, but he's competing with better. He's probably competing with guys like Bont and McRae and that sort of stuff at the Bulldogs for a more substantial role, whereas mm. Bud is slipping right outside. Yeah, he's slipping right into that wing guard pole type yeah, of void that's, that's been left. Yeah, that's a good point. Sam Walsh is paying two dollars yeah. eighty five on sports bet. Do you reckon those are too short odds? Yeah, that's the one sort of thing that like he probably will win it r realistically, yeah. but it's not really a value bet though, is it? Not really. I like, think that butters. Mine is particularly exactly. juicy, so I'm going to get on that. Excellent. The yeah, way the odds are currently set up, you could bet the 10 guys with the next best odds after Walsh and still make money because they're all paying over 10 bucks. So you could chuck the same amount of money on all 10 of them in theory and basically effectively bet the field against Walsh and still make money. See, this is why he's the master better. Yeah. Like, do, 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 do. Copyright <laughs> cool. Just getting back to the Coleman as well. Yeah. You know who I reckon is my new uh, preferred bet? Tom McDonald. Tom, yeah, he, he, was, he was paying 10 bucks. It was an interesting one. He, yeah. I was tossing up between him and Brown, but Brown sort of, I felt, was a little more proven. He is, I agree. Well, actually, I don't know. Tom McDonald's very proven too. Yeah. He had, now that he's, especially now that he, there's no Hogan to compete with. That's true. Yeah. Hogan called, uh, scored 47 goals last year. Yeah. Um, Tom Lynch is going to be competing with Rewalt for goals, so you think maybe yeah. they're splitting that up. Um, you know who else is a really juicy bet? And this is a bit outlandish, but it's uh, Joe Danaher, $34 sports bet. Yeah. Certainly depends on how early he can come back, though, from his injuries. Because I think he's out for six, was it? I think he's out for a few weeks, which probably... Then I'm just going to edit that oh. out. What other <laughs> bets you got for us? Well, My first one I've got is Jake Lloyd to be an All-Australian defender. He was paying four bucks to make this. They're basically saying he's a one in four chance of making the team, 25%. I'd say coming off his reigning Sydney best and fairest, he's only young. He's got an upward projection. 
if he does in fact stay as a backman, he is very he's one of the premier medium small backs in the league. I've also got one that's a little rougher pick for all Australian, however. Orazio Fantasia for an all Australian forward berth. People are probably a bit crazy, but he's paying eleven dollars at the moment, which is a nine point one percent chance of happening, I believe. But he only played thirteen games last season and he looked quite good in most of them, especially once he built up a bit of form. Got a bit of health behind him, a bit of consistency. He looked, he looked good, and he will look to continue to build on those positives. He's had a, he's healthier. He's built on that. He's in a good prime position to take that next step, I believe. Yeah, all right, good picks. I like it. I like it. Um, do you have any particular interesting bets for the Premiership? I know that one's a little bit harder to find value, yeah. but yeah, you... it was a bit. I didn't mind the Eagles actually. As everyone knows, I'm not, I'm not one to go out of the way to say nice things about the Eagles, but I generally think there's good value here. They're paying seven dollars fifty. They're the fourth favourite based on Bet Easy, where they had Collingwood, Richmond, and Melbourne ahead of them. Mm. I feel that it's a bit skewed. You know who's interestingly, I'm pretty sure is the fifth favourite on sports bet is Adelaide Crows. Now, I, a lot of people are pegging them to rise up the ladder, including myself, but for a team that came 12th or 13th, to think they're their fifth favourite in the Premiership betting seems a bit strange, doesn't it? It's interesting, but I can I can understand why people... They're, they're trendy roughy. They're definitely yeah. the trendy roughy, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> you know who actually I reckon is a stinky bet, and I say stinky in a positive sense? Oh, sorry. There is a market for the leader after round four. Fremantle is paying $21. I reckon that's not a terrible bet because they've got North Melbourne at home in round one. Um, this will probably go up after round one, so if they get Belgium, yeah. it'll fucking dig down. <laughs> but North Melbourne in round one, Gold Coast away, and then St Kilda in Perth. So a good chance to go 3-0. What? I like that, actually. Yeah. $21 is a good bet. Yeah. But then they played West Coast in round four. Hard to see them getting the win there, but it is possible that they could yeah. still be 3-1 and, and, and on top. And percentage. Because yeah. derbies are often closed, so if it's down to a three to one on percentage, if it's a competitive close derby, that could be. Yeah. Last derby wasn't close. Brownlow betting is always good fun. Yeah. Um, do you have anyone you're keeping your eye on at the moment? Five the favourite seven's pretty good money, like really at seven dollars, and he's pretty good shout. But with Fife, there's always the risk he's going to get suspended or injured. Paddy Cripps is another one. If Carlton can improve on their last year and get a few more wins on the board, he'll be right in the thick of it. How, uh, they probably need to win. Seven or eight games for him to win the Brownlow. Probably, yeah. Uh, which I don't think I will, but we'll see. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't really have any real good picks for the Brownlow, but one player has found himself fairly short in the betting, and that's my boy Dom Sheed. He's level with Dylan Shield, Luke Shuey, Matt Crouch in the Brownlow betting. Like that's in good odds, company. And better odds than Brody Grundy, Dane Zorko, and Zach Merritt. Ooh, yeah, um, particularly Grundy. That's interesting. Yeah, and literally, it was odds to make the eight as well. I think Carlton were the lowest at ten dollars, but then Gold Coast were paying fifty to one, mm. and Carlton were the second lowest at ten to one. So that sort of shows how little faith there is in Gold Coast within yeah. the betting in football, wider football circles. Really, I guess there's not much faith in Gold Coast. All right, guys. Well, I think that's pretty much all we have. We just want to say. Bet responsibly. Maybe put a dollar on each of these bets if you really, really want to, because, uh, yeah, at the end of the day. Or bundle them all together for a multi and just yolt. Chuck a dollar, multi them all together, chuck a dollar on it and yolo. That's what I've done. Yeah. If it comes up, I'm winning 80 grand. Cool, yeah. guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe. We do a podcast, we do analysis videos, and we're going to have a weekly tips show throughout the year. So, thank you. We'll see you next time. This has been another production from True Footy. I thought we were going to do it together. Fusion, huh? You wouldn't. Do you get that Dragon Ball Z reference? No, no one does.